welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we would love to hear from you. All you need to do is give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling us outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at EWTN.com. Well, today we have a beautiful, lovely guest. Her name is Denise Bossert, and she is a convert to the Catholic faith. And she's nationally recognized author and a speaker on conversion, the Blessed Mother and the Holy Land Faith Travel. So we are going to have a lot to talk about, and uh, you will be blessed by the show. So stay tuned. Another thing we'd like to express our condolences to all the people who are just suffering. I mean, we're all suffering for this sickness and of murder I mean all the shooting and everything that goes on Alexandria, in Alexandria Virginia and in Alexandria right, Virginia there. all of a sudden it comes to our face and in the innocence of practice and baseball and you, you're it just awakens you and you're like what yeah you know but so many people's hearts are grief stricken yeah. you're hurting you're angry you're like when is this enough it's not left it's a right it's human. Yeah. It's, this is the human condition of us all. When one suffers, we all suffer. And we pray especially for Representative Steve Scalise, Scalise. and uh, for his recovery. <laughs> Last I heard, he was in yes. critical condition. Hopefully, his state is, is getting better. I know he's facing more surgeries. For others who've been wounded, we give thanks for the officers that were there from the uh, Capitol Police for their heroism. Uh, we pray for everybody involved, including that shooter who was killed uh, either right there on the spot or when he was taken to the hospital died later on. Um, Gary Palmer who's a friend of ours, a right. congressman, uh, was right there at shortstop mm -hmm. uh, when Steve Scalise was uh, was hit there on uh, second base, was shot. Um, so um, so disturbing, you know, our culture has become in so many ways a culture of, of violence, mm -hmm. as John Paul II would say, a culture of death, as Pope Francis says, a throwaway culture. So now, if somebody's of a different political persuasion or view than you, um, let's talk about killing them, let's talk about decapitating them, and uh, let's talk about having some plays or musicals that shows them being stabbed to death, and then finally, let's do it. Mm -hmm. um, God help us. And you know, Joy, thinking about this and the violence in our society, uh, the targeting of police officers from, you know, right. it's like crazy. Um, it makes us angry. Um, I hope, hope it's a constructive anger that we put into working for justice and mercy. And for me, especially like today I woke up, to me, the work we do at our help center, pregnancy help center, dealing day in and day out with babies that might be aborted. And, and other situations, just, just to the grief of this world and sickness. So I, I was thinking, like, I just like, felt grieved, mm -hmm. weepy, but it, it, it's right to feel that way. And uh, because I think God wants to be an intercession. Right. You know, I, blessed are those who mourn, for they'll be comforted. Those who sow with tears shall reap with shouts of joy. It doesn't deny the evil that's, that's in our land. Um, but we should use it as an intercession, and we should never lose faith. I was asked today to read the psalm at a mass in our center, and the refrain for the psalm, what the people say together, um, is well, it's, the Lord, the glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. So after each verse, right. we would say the glory. Do you believe that the glory of the Lord? will dwell in the land of Israel, in Jerusalem. That the glory of the Lord will dwell in America. The glory of the Lord will dwell in Japan, in Russia, in wherever. Sooner or later, one way or another, mm -hmm. the glory of the Lord will prevail. And we need to have that faith. Mm -hmm. Where Satan tortures us right. through murder and violence and sickness and failure and whatever. No, that's all real. I can't deny that. But the glory of the Lord will dwell in the land. Right. There is a resurrection, right? And you know, even for the shooter, um, and now he's deceased, and, but he was somebody's son. Mm. He was somebody's brother or sister, you know, and we pray for mercy for them. I mean, they're yeah. all going to this, yeah. like, what? And the innocent lives, I mean, people just being, 
you know, shot yeah. at. It, it, yeah. it just really, yeah. I mean, at, we were listening to it and we were just like, what? What happens? And it's just kind of like, Lord, have mercy on this nation because we have lost yeah. God's heart on the dignity and value of every human being. We lost it. And we just have to pray that we would yeah. recapture that work and, and know pray. Pray and, and work, work and pray. Denise Bossert is our special guest. She's written a beautiful book, The Gifts of the Visitation. She talks about nine special gifts that were given between Mary and Elizabeth. And uh, she's spent a lot of time in the Holy Land, so she's kind of traced the steps. Of, of that visitation, where the visitation took place, the Annunciation, what would Mary be looking at, and she shares her own conversion as well. You're going to be greatly blessed. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Back. Well, you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love to hear from you. If you have a question for today's guest, Denise Bossert, all you need to do is give us a jingle during the live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980, and you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com, and hopefully we will use your question or your comment right here on the air. Well, today I bring you a beautiful woman. Her name is Denise Bossert. She's a convert to the Catholic first faith. She is a nationally recognized author and speaker on conversion. She also the Blessed Mother and the Holy Land Faith Travel. So she's got lots of things to tell us. But one of the things, and she's been on Journey Home, you may have seen her before, but Denise, I want to welcome you to At Home with Jim and Joy. Thank you. And I want you to tell our family at home a little bit about your journey okay. into Catholicism, as I call it, from Protestant land to Catholic land. <laughs> so why don't you just tell our family a little bit back home about yourself? Okay. Well, I had no, it was not on my radar mm -hmm. to become Catholic. Um, I grew up in a Protestant minister's home. Dad was a pastor. He was a Wesleyan minister, so I was in fourth grade, and then he became a Presbyterian pastor. And I had cousins who were Assembly of God and Nazarene. Uh, it just wasn't part of what I thought I was mm -hmm. going to be doing. And uh, my father became very sick, and I was really close to him. Dad's name is Dennis, was Dennis, mine is Denise. Mm -hmm. I was daddy's daughter, mm -hmm. his little girl. And we had great theological discussions. And he was, for all practical purposes, he was my pastor, pastoral. He was like my priest and pope right. all wrapped mm -hmm. up in one as well as dad. And he became very sick in 2003. He'd had some neurological disorders that caused great suffering. And then he had some acute things that mm -hmm. were very painful as well. And mm -hmm. on December 28th of 2003, he passed away suddenly from a pulmonary embolism. Mm -hmm. And that sent me on a journey um, about the theology of suffering. You know, it's like I knew growing up in a pastor's home, you know, God, you know, the reality of God, maybe even before you know your own mm -hmm. reality of mm -hmm. who you are. And so I knew God wasn't broken, but that meant my theology was incomplete. So I went on a quest for the answer to this. You were talking about suffering and mm -hmm. grief. and. And that was the question that really was the driving question mm -hmm. behind my conversion. Found the answer in books. Literature is my major, so God gets your attention, whether it's music mm -hmm. and you love music or art or whatever. Right. And uh, so many have come in through the pro-life movement. Whatever has your heart, you know, God is going to mm -hmm. get your attention. And, and so it's a long story how I was reading one book after another, and I happened upon St. John of the Cross and Dark Night of the Soul. Mm -hmm. And it, he talks about how even when you feel abandoned and you think that our Lord's not there, our suffering Lord is closer to you than he's ever been mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And you're not abandoned. In fact, he's sitting so close to you that you can't see him because the room is just that dark mm -hmm. and you're suffering and your grief. Um, and that made sense to me that in my dad's suffering and then my grief, mm -hmm that the room was pretty dark and I just 
I couldn't yeah. see him. And from there, I went to his spiritual companion, who's also a writer, mm -hmm. a Carmelite writer in St. Teresa of Avila. And Joy, one day, I was reading Interior Castle, mm -hmm. and I put the book down beside me on the bed. Mm -hmm. I like to sit up in bed and read. Yeah. And I put the book down beside me on the bed, and I just looked at it. And I thought, I want what they had. Mm -hmm. I want that spirituality. I want that faith. Mm -hmm. And the next thought I had, and now this is Grace, was Denise, in order to have any chance at that kind of faith and spirituality, you must call your faith home the same faith home that gave birth to that. Mm -hmm. You must become Catholic mm -hmm. for it to give birth in your own life. And we were building a home west of St. Louis. We live west of the city of St. Louis. And I went into the Catholic Church and I said, I, I I think I'm supposed to become Catholic. How do how do I do that? Because I didn't know anybody, <laughs> right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know yeah. that could you know talk me through it. I was basically on a journey in my own soul. In yeah. fact, it was close to that time I actually came to my husband, who was Southern Baptist at the time. He's now Catholic mm -hmm. also, and I said, I I think I'm supposed to become Catholic, mm -hmm. and I hadn't been sharing any of this mm -hmm. that I was reading. But it's been the greatest joy to. Um, Receive the Eucharist. I think the second greatest joy is to receive the Eucharist with my husband mm -hmm, mm -hmm. together. Yeah. So when he came in. So when you went into the Catholic Church, was the priest like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do with you, or did he <laughs> take good care of you? <laughs> he took really good care of me. Excellent. It's funny, when, when I first, you know, contacted a priest to say, you know, I've got some questions, I, 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 I don't know what's happening to me, this journey, um, I think I want to become Catholic. And my arrogance. I thought he'd be like, oh, this is great. Right. This never happens. Yeah. We never get <laughs> Protestant converts. And little did I know that the, one of the first things he said is, oh, you need to read Scott Hahn. He was a Presbyterian pastor like your dad, and you'll maybe understand some of the things. And, and I realized that there are thousands mm -hmm. of former Protestant pastors yeah. who mm -hmm. left everything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing they were trained to do. I mean, like my dad, that's all they were trained to do. Mm -hmm. So when they decide to walk away from that, they're bagging groceries. Yeah, you know they're 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 doing they're living a very humble life to seek truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the Catholic Church likes informed consent, so you, they don't just kind of embrace you right, right. away. It's right. kind of like we really want you to understand <laughs> as best you can. There's always going to be still mystery, yeah. but uh, we want you to understand you know as best you can what you're coming into and the encounters that you're going to have. And obviously, Our Lady is. Uh, a very large part of the family and right. so for many converts Our Lady can be a stumbling block it's not her problem you know, it's our problem it's, it's our uh, problem. but so where did Our Lady fit into your journey was really she easy for you was it difficult for you how did it fit in it was the number one obstacle for me and I think that's fairly typical for Protestants coming in the Immaculate Con Conception specifically, the mm. teaching on the Immaculate Conception for me, was almost a deal breaker. Uh, in fact, it, it would have had it not mm -hmm. been for a massive amount of grace and, and a, an answered petition. Uh, and I, I write about that right. in my book, but um, I read John 6, and I listened to our Lord's words, and I knew that what he was saying was the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. And I understood, you know, if you're going to take the Bible seriously, which you say that you do, then take him at his word. So I knew the Eucharist was true. I knew the papacy was necessary for unity. There were things that were making sense to me. But when we came to that teaching in RCIA, I, I had inherited a bias against it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like somehow any focus on the Blessed Mother, it eclipses our Lord sure. and we should be focusing on him without realizing you're right. It's yeah. like, this is the family, mm -hmm. you know, and you have a mother. Uh, but it wasn't piercing my bias, and so my RCI, I said to my RCIA later, I said, Sean, can I come into the church and receive the Eucharist if I can't say that I believe in that? And he said, no. I thought you'd say, sure, we're yeah. coming, because you know, we're going to make an like, exception we'll for just, you. <laughs> you know, wherever you want to go, whatever you, he said, no, either you believe that what mm -hmm. the church teaches is true, and she has been given the authority to speak truth, mm -hmm. or you don't. Mm -hmm. And he said, he laid it all out in scripture, Ark of the New Covenant, mm -hmm. the New Eve, and it just wasn't piercing. I was mm -hmm. like Tom, Downing Thomas, yeah. you know. He said, Denise, go home and make a petition to Our Lady to show you. Mm -hmm. 
So I did, and it was December 12th, which meant nothing to me at that right. point. Right. I didn't know the liturgical calendar right. well enough. What do you mean by make a petition? Like write a prayer itself? I actually itself? wrote it uh -huh. out. Uh -huh. okay. I'm a yeah. literature major, and I'm a writer, yeah. obviously, and I was keeping a journal. Mm -hmm. I had a prayer journal, and so in my prayer journal, I still have it captured. And it was, I need you, Mary, to show me that you are the Immaculate Conception, that everything that church teaches is true, and it's terra firma. And I need it to be in the next two weeks. I put a time limit on mm -hmm. the Blessed Mother. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so she's still... The things we do to like, our mothers. Oh. She's amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyway, um, because I couldn't sit on the fence not knowing I could... I knew this was my Lord. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to receive Him. But I wouldn't say a lie so I could receive the one I did believe in. Right. It was a conundrum. And I, so I need someone to communicate to me that you are who the church says. And I need it to be from your lips to their ears mm -hmm. and not someone who knows that I'm like going so mm -hmm. Sean he could have like said Denise is going right. through a crisis send right. her a book right. and I've been like that's how that yeah. you know the earthly tongues are telling people to do something for me and so the very next day I went out to the mailbox and in the mailbox was a letter from a woman in Scranton Pennsylvania I had seen her once, this is December, mm -hmm. and I had seen her once in July on the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. She was on the journey home. It was back when you could click through channels, mm -hmm. and I happened to click on EWTN, mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. Then on the journey home, it said Third Order Carmelite, and I'd been reading the Carmelites, and I thought, you mean you're still living? Yes. <laughs> like, I thought they're all dead. <laughs> like, I have to write this lady. Mm -hmm. So I wrote Mary Beth once in July, and she wrote me back in August, and that was it. Mm -hmm. I thought that was it. I had no reason to think she would write again. So here it is December the 13th now. Just a day later I walk out and there's a letter from her in my mailbox. And do you know what she dated that letter? December 12th. Actually the 8th. The 8th. When you, That's there, the you go. there you go. She wrote mm -hmm. it on mm -hmm. December 8th. Mm -hmm. And she had written December 8th and she wrote Feast of the Immaculate Conception, which we know it's a right. solemnity, but right. I didn't even know that at that right. point. All mm -hmm. I knew is she wrote this on December 8th. Mm -hmm. And it says Immaculate Conception on it. And that was my petition. And I knew two things. I knew that we have a mother. Mm -hmm. She's the mother of all believers. She's the mother of the church. But I also was crying because I knew I had a mother. Mm -hmm. Like any good mother, she had anticipated what this daughter would need mm -hmm. before she even knew how to mm -hmm. ask it. Mm -hmm. And so she had set into motion all the things I would need so that when I made my petition on the 12th, she could have it <laughs> in the mail, literally, right. on, my, on the way to me. Yeah. And we became dear friends. Her name is Mary Elizabeth, and it fits because the book I was to write mm -hmm. was on the visitation. Mm -hmm. And how can you write anything with any kind of credibility if you have not said, I'm all in and I believe this? Right. And so I think that's part of, it was my weakness. She needed to answer that with such clarity mm -hmm. so that I would say, I believe mm -hmm. there's yeah. no doubt. Right. Yeah. So you settled life. that completely hard, relationship and then completed RCIA and I then did. came into the church. I mm -hmm. did. Okay. Um, your book is a beautiful book, The Gifts of the Visitation, and it's been a great joy to read the nine spiritual encounters uh, with Mary and Elizabeth. Um, and it's those encounters, those gifts are just beautiful, beautiful gifts. They are. And some I could identify with, some I, I really. Couldn't go. I'm not doing pretty doing well. <laughs> so in we some. pray for that. <laughs> we pray for those so things. You got the spirit of spontaneity. Right. That was the one I got difficulties with. She's spontaneous. I'm not spontaneous, but I'm getting. But that's why we're married. Balances <laughs> it yeah. out. Courage, right? joy, a spirit of readiness, a spirit of humility, a spirit of adventure, a spirit of hospitality, a spirit of wonder and awe, a spirit of thanksgiving and descending. Um, and your book, it, it's beautiful how you bring forth the encounter. I was thinking about how to describe it today, and it's like a full meal. Mm -hmm. It's like a full course meal. It's not just dessert or the antipas. It's the whole thing. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. um, and it's that way. I mean, you go in such great depth. The Lord's really giving you insight. But you also speak so much about the Holy Land mm -hmm. and setting this visitation really in the context of, of the Holy Land, the Annunciation. Where is that? What does that look like? Right. Where would she have lived? How would she have gotten you know, over to the place of the visitation. What's the name of the city? Ayn Karem. Ayn Karem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so you really take people through all of that. Then your conversion is in this. Right. Then you're challenging us to a deeper conversion. Right. Um, Which sounds really complicated, but really what no, it's it is, it, yeah. it's, 
she receives our Lord at the Annunciation and she immediately goes out to share him. Mm -hmm. She immediately goes out to share him. Now that for her is 80 miles away when she doesn't have a car, she can't text ahead. There's no <laughs> Google Maps, there's right. nothing. But joy sends her out to yeah. Elizabeth mm -hmm. to share the good news with Elizabeth. And so what I do is I parallel that to our Lord calling me into the church. And it requires all those same things that like openness, spontaneity, courage, because you're walking away from things, your, your family, right. Right. Either the, it, yes. those who are converts, there's, there's like a tearing away mm -hmm. in a way that uh, is so difficult because you are saying, I have a mother mm -hmm. and I have sisters and brothers in the faith and I'm embracing this faith. And it's like Ruth saying, where you go, I will go. Right. You're, mm -hmm. you know, where you lodge, I will lodge. Right. Your, your people, people will be, be my people, people and your mm -hmm. God will be my right. God. You're like Ruth. And so it's hard, but it's very much that same kind of journey. Mm -hmm. And for me, evangelization became such a big part of what I do when I give talks that it parallels perfectly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then to the sending where you go out, you know, like we're, yeah. we're called to, it's our supreme duty. Right to right. share what we've been given. Well, I, we love the work of evangelization. Our whole network is mm -hmm. dedicated to evangelization. Mm -hmm. It was just very beautifully done to see Our Lady as the first you know, evangelist, right. even before Our Lord is birthed. And that idea of she's bringing Christ and Elizabeth being you know, like one of the first receivers mm -hmm. of our Lord, even before he's, he's born. And to learn from that in terms of evangelization was beautiful. So you were asked to do this book. Mm -hmm. And uh, when did you start going to the Holy Land? Before, while you were writing the book or a after the before? Oh, the Blessed Mother's yeah. all over that story. Mm -hmm. um, I was asked to write the book. I had been a syndicated columnist for diocesan newspapers. And that's how Ave Maria press found mm -hmm. me and they said can you pitch a book Let, let's talk about some possible topics and we settled on the visitation and I was like super excited about writing about this I love the visitation and it was in November so probably a couple months after I signed a contract and the book was due full manuscript due June, June 1st or something like that and this was November I remember saying to our lady I give her my biggest petitions to intercede and I said how can I write this book? Mm -hmm. If uh, I don't go. <laughs> if I have never been mm -hmm. where it happened. Mm -hmm. How can I speak about it with any kind of credibility when so many have been and I've never been there? And I don't have the funds in such a short amount of time to be able to make this happen in a six month turnaround. If you want me to be there, if you want me to see it, I need you to help make that happen. In December, I joined the Catholic Press Association. I thought, you know, I really should be doing this. I have a contract mm -hmm. on a book. I've been writing for thousands of newspapers for probably eight, nine years. It's about time I do that. And within one month of doing that, so it's January, they send out an email inviting Catholic journalists and freelancers and well, now editors. Now you are, right? Yeah, you're right, like, to, me. To apply mm -hmm. for a free trip to the Holy Land sponsored by Israel Ministry of Tourism to Catholic journalists, which happened to also be the same time that Pope Francis was going to be in the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. So it's May of 2014. And I thought, I still don't have a chance because really syndicated columnist means you're a glorified freelance writer. Mm -hmm. I'm not on staff anywhere. I applied and I was there in May of 2014. That is so wonderful. And I saw Ein Karim and I came back and... Um, Let's pause right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we're speaking with uh, Denise Bossert about her wonderful book, Gifts of the Visitation, her own conversion, and the setting of the Gifts of the Visitation between Our Lady and Elizabeth. Really go into the real side. She's going to elaborate upon that, where the Annunciation took place, the Visitation, the city, what Mary may have seen, what was going on, maybe a little bit about foods. I always mm. like that area. We'll be right back. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, remember that we want you to be a part of our show. So if you have a question for Denise today, just give us a jingle during our live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling us outside in North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. You can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com, and hopefully we will use your question or your comment right here on the air. Well, Denise, let's continue the conversation on gifts of the visitation, and you're on site now okay. in Israel. So what difference does it really make, or what was it like for you? It enriches your book, maybe the sites, those key sites right. of the Annunciation, the visitation, what's between them, whatever you, we need to know. I think the first thing that surprised me was the distance between Nazareth and Ein Karim. Mm -hmm. Uh, we know that they were traveling a lot. They would walk from you know town to town, Cana of Galilee, you know Caesarea, um, Philippi, um, Capernaum. Mm -hmm. Well, all of those are located around the Sea of Galilee, not very far from one another. Magdala is all right there, but not Ein Karim. Ein Karim is 80 miles away. So when, in great haste, she decides to go and share this good news mm -hmm. and wonderful thing that has happened with her relative Elizabeth. She's in Nazareth. The Blessed Mother is in Nazareth, and she is saying, I'm going to go on this 80-mile journey to Ein Karim, mm -hmm. which is near Jerusalem. And if you've ever seen pictures, you kind of get a sense of what a lot of the Holy Land looks like. It's some of the m most rugged terrain I've ever seen. And she is climbing the hills of Judea. Mm -hmm. She either took the hills of Samaria into the hills of Judea and, and up the last hill mm -hmm. to the visitation. Or she went through the Jordan River Valley and then into the hills of Judea and up the hill to, to which the last climb is, is like the best stairmaster in the whole world because mm -hmm. it's like you're, you're running mm -hmm. and you know, getting she's to the top. She's a that. young, pregnant, pregnant woman yeah. saying yes to this. Mile travel. 80 mile travel. That's spontaneity for you. That's spontaneity. And courage. And courage. Mm -hmm. And what drove her to do that? It has to be joy. Mm -hmm. She has to be filled with right. joy because you wouldn't just right. decide I'm going to do that. It was that. like supernatural adrenaline. You know? <laughs> it's like, right. I will bless you. Go. Yeah. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. And we're, we're to do the same thing. Because I, what I bring out is we receive Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. His true presence, mm -hmm. his real presence is in the Eucharist. We, we received him this morning. And then we were sent out. That's our Nazareth moment. We're not called to stay in our bedroom in Nazareth. Mm -hmm. We are called to go out and find Elizabeth in our world, the Ein Karim, wherever that may be. And you know what? Be as brave as she was. Some of us think oh, driving eight miles might be hard. We would think twice about driving 80 miles. She went with probably a caravan or a mm -hmm. group, mm -hmm. maybe even sometimes was segments mm -hmm. while she was getting ready to get to the next group. On her own, without a vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, Correct. without a phone. Right. Well, let's talk about a phone. We have a phone call. Yay. All right. So, Jeff, you're on the phone. <laughs> Welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment for Denise. Yes, thank you so much for having me. And, Denise, you know, you had actually helped me get to the Holy Land back in October. Oh, I know uh, who this I is. extraordinarily thankful for. And you talked about bringing kind of the geography to life about where Mary had to travel and one of the beautiful things for me was really bringing the stories of the Bible to life and knowing what the train looked like and standing at the foot of the cross where Mary would have stood. And it's really amazing after hearing the Bible readings throughout my whole life to then hear them again with the um, notion of what things actually look like and where it was and what Golgotha looked like. Uh, can, you, can you talk maybe about your own experience of of how being in the Holy Land has helped enrich your faith in that regard. And, and bring us in particular, you know, to, to the site of the visitation, if you would. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff, for calling in. Um, it changes so much because when you enter into the site, you get the smells, you get the taste, which we were talking about food, the food that came from the land, which is, it tastes different. Mm -hmm. It's just wonderful food. Mm -hmm. And you get a sense of, especially when you walk in to the, the Church of the Visitation, you have the tabernacle there, you have Jesus is still there. Mm, wow. And that hits you over and over and over. Now, had I gone as a Protestant, I wouldn't have, right. that wouldn't have even been on my radar. Right. And I wonder, 
would I have seen Mary everywhere? Because I see her everywhere. Mm -hmm. She's in all of the churches back. I don't know how you can not, I don't know how you can stay Protestant if you go to the Holy Land because you see her everywhere. You see Catholic churches in the tabernacle and you see all these things that you're lighting candles and it's a very, it's our Catholicity is mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, the visitation though, climbing the last hill to get to the Church of the Visitation, like I said, it's it's an undertaking because you, it's it's quite a climb. Yeah. It's quite a climb. They made it easy so like even people like me who are middle aged and not in the greatest shape mm -hmm. can still do it. Uh, and I like to run it, which is, is a massive effort. When I get to the top though and I see the church mm -hmm. and it there's this marvelous painting of the visitation on the front of the church and the spear goes up into, you know, the skies over mm -hmm. the hills of Judea. Mm -hmm. And then you turn and you look, and there's the hills of Judea, and you know exactly what she just came yes. across mm -hmm. to get there. And the Magnificat is on a wall in I don't know how many languages, mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. hundreds of different languages. Mm -hmm. it's, the Magnificat is written out on the wall. And there's this iconic statue of Mary and Elizabeth standing there. And when pilgrimage groups go, the ladies who have bonded on this pilgrimage love to stand in front of that mm -hmm. statue and have their pictures taken because mm -hmm. we women get it. Right. We mm -hmm. understand what it means to bear life mm -hmm. to the world mm -hmm. and to bond as women and they have, it's usually one of the last things you do on a pilgrimage is go to Ein Karim, it's usually the last day. Mm -hmm. And so all of this has transpired and you sense the charisms of being with Mary mm -hmm. and Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And the beauty and the joy and the fullness the, of participating with God Almighty and growing a baby in your womb. And you really know the miracle of what that is. Yes. I mean, and, that's, and that has to be a game changer forever. Even, if, even if, as you're older and you're done bearing children, yes. it's like, what did I do, God? What did you do inside of me? Mm -hmm. And then go forever and live forward, you know, yeah. glorifying the Lord, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Speak to us about openness to the Holy Spirit okay. with Our Lady and Elizabeth. I mean, just their lives, but also in that encounter, obviously they were open to the Holy Spirit before they encountered each other, but then the Holy Spirit is just so active. Mm -hmm. You know, in that moment, like what's supposed to happen in that moment? And that's one of your gifts is hospitality, to this hospitality. Right. So, I mean, they hadn't been talking on the phone, you know, before they met <laughs> about a lot of stuff, you know. So they're just coming together and just talk about the Holy Spirit in this encounter. Well, when I was thinking about the chapters and, and, and how I would structure it. I I thought a novena would be great. So I, I was like, if I could get to nine, what, what were nine charisms or gifts that were, were present? And I was struggling and my friend Mary Beth, who I, I dedicate the book to my friend who wrote me the letter, mm -hmm. uh, she came back with, um, I think it was a spirit of hospitality that she came back with. And I'm like, of course. But it's the one that you say you have one that you're kind of weak on and yeah. what is spontaneity. Mm -hmm. Well, that was when I was kind of weak. I'm not the Kool-Aid mom. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. not the Miss Hospitality, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and so that's when I have to pray for. But yeah. courage and wonder and awe, and you're like, those are ours by way of confirmation. Yeah. Those are gifts. They're part of the gifts mm -hmm. we receive when we're confirmed. Right. And then I realized some are ours by DNA. Mm -hmm. You're spontaneous, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not you know, miss hospitality. I want my husband to be there when some the repairman comes. I right. don't want to deal with that. <laughs> um, but there are times when you need it right. in order to evangelize. And that's when you ask for a, an out, supernatural outpouring right. yeah. because it's not by way of your DNA and it's not something that came at the moment of mm -hmm. your confirmation. So all of those things came together and I had the nine chapters. You can read it like a novena or you can just read it as a story because mm -hmm. it just reads as yes. a contemplation of the visitation and it is particularly I think appropriate during Advent or during the month of May mm -hmm. which ends with the visitation um, it's it's a gift that's really good for RCIA yes. because it also has conversion journey in mm -hmm. it and it's a good idea for anyone who wants to evangelize but they're intimidated because it's the blueprint for mm -hmm. evangelization mm -hmm. it's receive Christ and then Get out there and share him. Mm -hmm. And now give him away. Now, yes. And share him with, I mean, even this morning, we had an encounter at the center. And at the end of the, the counseling with a girl, one of our uh, counselors is meeting with her. And we, we, had, we took care of her needs. Right. And then the girl looked at my counselor and said, would you pray with me? 
You know, and we were, we were just, because they, usually they don't ask that. You know, we're right. always initiating right. that. Because that's, you know, we evangelized her. We loved her. We took her to a deeper place with the love of mm -hmm. Christ, you know. And, and that's, that's the heart cry of humans. We're all crying. Would someone right. hear my heart cry? I need my spiritual connection. Won't you be that person? Won't you be the blessed mother who comes Who's to me? To, yes. to, right, you're, be, you're the Elizabeth. Right. And that, and another thing, and I'm not the one who coined this phrase, but it is a divine visitation when mm -hmm. that happens. Mm -hmm. And we can be a catalyst for a divine visitation. That moment that you experienced mm -hmm. was a divine visitation because God showed up. That's right. Our incarnate Lord showed up in your midst and prompted her to ask for prayer, mm -hmm. and you just say, absolutely. Yeah. So we are called, after we receive, to go out and be the catalyst for divine visitation where God comes and is in our presence in the lives of other people. Sure. Okay, I'm going to go straight to an email. It says, seeing where what we believe was actually lived out is very exciting. Are you concerned for your personal safety when you're traveling to the Holy Land and giving all trouble to the, given all the trouble in that region? And this is Annette from Deer Park, Maryland. It's, this is an excellent question. I get this question a lot. Now, I'm middle-aged and I go on my own. I've gone on pilgrimage. I've gone when I was a, a Catholic liaison for Israel Ministry of Tourism. I did that for a year. And now I even go by myself. So I will get my own plane ticket. I will rent a car. I will drive from Jerusalem to Galilee. I'll drive all around the Sea of Galilee and all the places because you know what? I wanted to know what it was like to be our Lord there. Mm. He would get bored in a place. Well, on pilgrimage, you are sleep deprived and you're moving so fast, you'd never get bored. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go and I, would, I wanted to sit in places yeah. long enough that I knew what it was like to have been our Lord looking out on the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. Last time I went, I caught a terrible cold. And at the end of it, I'm like, really? I caught a cold while I'm here? And I realized he got sick while he was there. Yeah. I mean, so I wanted to experience it as deeply and, and, and intensely as I could. That said, I recommend going on pilgrimage because you will never feel afraid. Mm -hmm. You're in this grace bubble. It's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And they, they take security so seriously. So I would say, don't be afraid mm -hmm. anyway. Statistically speaking, and I know this from having worked for Israel Ministry of Tourism, at one point, we could say no one had been killed mm -hmm. from the United States who was visiting Israel. About 13 months ago, there was someone stabbed in Tel Aviv. We don't even have that statistic we can claim in the United States because people travel mm -hmm. to yeah. our country mm -hmm. all the time. And whether they're in one of the major cities, we have some major cities mm -hmm. that are on the don't travel mm -hmm. there list mm -hmm. to other countries. Yeah. Um, but I would have to say, even when I travel on my own, I feel completely safe. Mm -hmm. Most of them speak English. Um, the security is excellent. And this is the other thing. If there is turmoil in another place in, in North America mm -hmm. or South mm -hmm. America, that doesn't mean people don't come to our country. Right. Even the tragic news yesterday, mm -hmm. there's still people coming to the United right. States. Right. So I think it's a, it's a a shame that people don't say yes to going to the Holy Land for the yeah. experience because it really sheds so much grace upon all the readings and the rosary and um, the liturgical calendar. Yeah. You, you want to assess it, but I think of two of the gifts that you mentioned related to this is the spirit of courage Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and the spirit of adventure. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, those women had that and if we're going to go over there or live life today any place, you need courage in this world today, you and you need to have the spirit of adventure. Yeah. Okay, we have another email. It says, have your visits to the Holy Land help you to see Mother Mary as a real person rather than merely a spiritual figure? And if so, how has this affected your relationship with her in prayer? And this is Beth from Pennsylvania. <laughs> I think I know this Beth, too, mm -hmm. and she knows the answer to that question. If it's the Beth, I know. Um, because my first encounter with her was in an answered petition that was very personal mm -hmm. and very unlikely mm -hmm. and timely and just incredible. From the very beginning, it's been personal. What has traveling to the Holy Land been for me? I think for someone who maybe doesn't have a personal connection, it might, that might be a catalyst for that 
that, mm -hmm. that journey and that relationship with her. But for me, it takes me deeper into knowing what it was like to share the good news of the gospel for her mm -hmm. and how difficult it was. But it, And this is the thing I say, it's not so much something that she did one time. Mm -hmm. It's who she is and was. It's who she was created to be. All the and time. All the time. Mm -hmm. And if we are to be true evangelizers, mm -hmm. it's not, yes, give a book to somebody. Yes, make a phone call. Yes, invite somebody to Mass. But have who you are, the essence of who you are, be a Christ bearer and a Christ mm -hmm. sharer. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I'm a convert, and in my connection with Mary, I was um, very Protestant at the time, and in prayer, and the Holy Spirit really said to me, my mother can help you. And I, I had a mother. I didn't need a mother. And I was like, your mother? Oh, you want your mother to help me? And I was, I was in a very broken place. And I went to a priest, and, and he really, you know, um, presented Mary to me as a prayer partner in heaven. And there started our journey. But she is a mother, and she's she, what you just described, she constantly is who she, who she is. is. Like she never comes out of character as like, oh, That's I right. need a day off today, or I need right. some mom time, or she's constantly who she is. She is constantly she, bearing right. her children. That's so beautiful. Right. That's the kind of person she is, and she really is a person. Mm -hmm. I just think of, you know, the moms, even though we're getting close to Father's Day, I'm still thinking about moms. Um, moms could take a lot of abuse. Yeah. You know, and, and we're so abusive to Our Lady you know, in, in our pre-understanding of who she is. That, and it's not like I'm really put off, that's it. You know, I, I write you off. But she's like, you know, there. You know, she's always there and waiting and can take it. So you don't have to feel like, well, after all this, maybe she's not going to like me or something. Like, this is a mother that always loves her children. Absolutely. Yeah. And, w and that was one of the things. I was in RCIA, and I think it was before the Immaculate Conception uh, realization. Mm -hmm. One of the things I realized is I have offended her in offending him. Because anytime you harm the son, right. you harm the mom. Mm -hmm. And yet she loves me. And, um, <laughs> and even to speak to her as mom and who she is, the Immaculate Conception, our Lord, who is God, mm -hmm. who gave us the Ten Commandments, knows very well the commandment number four that he gave us, which is honor your father and mother. Mm -hmm. And of course he did in the right. most amazing way. Mm -hmm. So. It is, it is um, an incredible journey with her. Mm -hmm. And she wants to take our most difficult petitions and present mm -hmm. them to her son. Mm -hmm. She yes. just, mm -hmm. she wants to. Right. Denise, thank you so much for this beautiful book, Gifts of the Visitation, Nine Spiritual Encounters with Mary and Elizabeth. And thank you for bringing Christ to us, not simply through a book, but Christ in you, as Mary brought our Lord to Elizabeth and brings our Lord to us. Thank you so very, very Thank much. You God bless you. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you. We're you going to take a break. We'll be right back. Uh, I believe Father Joseph is going to be with us. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. part of our family and we would love for you to join us live right here on at home and be a member in our studio audience today we have someone who came from Indonesia she lives in Atlanta now but home is Indonesia no matter where you are we would love to have you come all you need to do is contact the EWTN pilgrimage department just send them an email pilgrimages at EWTN.com give them a jingle at 205-271 2966 and they will arrange that pilgrimage for you. You can also go to Hansville and visit Mother Angelica's resting place. Well, right now we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan. Joan, what do you have for us today? Well, greetings from Rome to all of you at home and 
Uh, in past days, there's been some very important news from the Vatican about something that's very near and dear to our hearts, and that is, of course, the sanctity of life. I think you all know or remember that in 1994, Pope John Paul II created the Pontifical Academy for Life. And its objective, of course, was to teach, defend, promote the church's ethic and teaching on the sanctity of life and on bioethics, to do research, and on Catholic theology. And that is exactly what the Academy has done for the recent decades since then. However, Pope Francis on May 16th named 45 new members, or 45 ordinary members, and five honorary members to the Academy, but it was announced only this past Tuesday, the names were announced, only this past Tuesday, June 13th. And interestingly enough, last December 31st, the entire body of 139 members, all of their appointments ceased on that very day. Of the new 50 members, of the 50 members, 28 are from the original 139. And there's five Americans in there, and that also includes uh, the head of the Supreme Knights of Columbus, and that is to say Carl Anderson. Now, however, observers have found a few distressing things in the names of several of the new members. There's one, for example, that has promoted abortion up into 18 months up into 18 weeks, excuse me, and has also promoted euthanasia. Another one has written consistently over the years against John Paul's documents and teachings, therefore the church's documents and teachings. And what is of greater concern to a lot of other people is the fact that so many of the original 139 members who spent decades defending and promoting the sanctity of life have not been renamed to this academy in the new body. But perhaps the most disturbing aspect was the fact that the new statutes of the academy have eliminated a requirement for new members to sign a statement promising to defend life in conformity with the church's magisterium. So it's been an interesting few days, and how's this for a headline? We have pro-abortion theologian picked as Pontifical Academy for Life members. So not really a good news story, but I'll stay on top of this and get back to you on it. But all for now. Joan, thank you so much for that report, for laying out what's going on there in Rome. May God work all things together for good for those who love him and are fitting into his plans, desires Amen. for that. Father Joseph, always wonderful to see you. Mm -hmm. What do you have for us today, your reflections? So it was about a year ago, probably a little over a year ago, I got this call from a lady in Chicago yeah. who worked for the Israeli Ministry of Tourism. And she said, I think I taught some of your cousins in Dyersville, Iowa, and we'd like to send a Catholic uh, group over to Israel, all expenses paid, to record whatever you want to do. So that was Denise. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it worked out that we sent a crew of seven of us over there, Father Mark and I. Perhaps you saw some of those shows yeah. we did in the Holy Land uh, during Holy Week and mm -hmm. Easter. And we also did Spanish programs as well, but it was a wonderful opportunity to visit those sites, including Ein Karem. Mm -hmm. And we actually did nine 30-minute specials. I think some of them are still being edited together, okay. but a couple of them have been completed. So, What was your impression of Ein Karim? That's the place of the visitation, mm -hmm. the book she wrote, yes. the gifts of the visitation. So she keeps talking about this, it was pretty steep hill, this and that. We're trying to picture our lady there, you know, young woman, yes. pregnant woman, and what was it like for you? Did you just go up the hill easily, or was it, is it significant? <laughs> it was or? raining, yeah. and fortunately I didn't have to carry a camera, but I think I did carry some gear, but that was a big hill, mm -hmm. yeah. and it took a long time to get up that last hill like she was talking about to get to the top. Yeah. But once you get up there, it's such a beautiful vista mm -hmm. of the whole mm -hmm. hill lands there, the highlands in uh, Judea. And then they have the Magnificat there and all the multiple languages. So we're looking for English and we finally found mm, the English one yeah. too. But you just had a sense of um, the awesomeness of that moment yeah. that Our Lady goes all that way as she was yes. saying to evangelize, to bring Christ and also out of charity, mm. you know, out of concern for her cousin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so and, the, beautiful. and the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit in that encounter, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, Elizabeth's words, you know, to Our Lady, you know, when, when your voice came forth, the baby, you know, within me, right, right you know, leapt, and, and you know, then 
they're just getting hit with the Holy Spirit, you know, yeah. and then, then, then Our Lady, you know, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, you know, and, mm -hmm. and just so, so powerful. And, you know, you think of those children, you know, that they would be mm -hmm. killed, you know, yeah. in, in their 30s, early 30s, I, I guess, approximately. And uh, a beautiful encounter, sharing of so much, sharing of sons that would be so pure and, and holy and, and lovely but who the mm -hmm. world would reject, you know? And you talk right. about going up that hill and Our Lady would have to walk up some hills, especially the place of the skull, you know? Mm -hmm. But yet, it's a beautiful vista. Right. But you gotta get up the hill and things mm -hmm. have to happen in order for you to see. You know, it's just so much in their encounter. And as our guest was saying, Denise, it was not just their encounter, it was God's encounter with hmm. them. Right. And he wants to encounter us through evangelization, through conversion, truly to be with us how she talked about her love now of the Blessed Sacrament coming into the mm -hmm. Catholic faith. And I couldn't help but think of Pope St. John Paul II. He talks about that, how in a way we experience what Mary experienced at the Annunciation mm -hmm. when we come to receive communion because we become another tabernacle mm -hmm. like Mary was when we receive Holy Communion, we carry him with us. And then as she mentioned at the end of Mass to go out then to bring what we've received to others mm -hmm. so that Christ might be born in others too. Amen. So beautiful. Well, Father, give us a blessing, please. Father, we thank you for the joys and blessings of our faith. We pray for all unborn children too, that you would watch over and protect them and help mothers to love them as Mary loved the unborn child in her womb and Elizabeth loved the unborn child in her womb. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 May Thank you, you Father. say with Our Lady, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. Take Christ to your family. Take Christ to your community. Take Christ to the world with Our Lady's help. God bless you and all of your loved ones. Bye now. <laughs>